<laughs> incredible. incredible. Thank incredible. you all for joining in. Today we have with us Dr. Sergio and uh, it's been, uh, you know, uh, I personally was been uh, behind learning uh, the bioprogressive approach since the time uh, we were uh, learning uh, being a postgraduate student in our university because it's such a wonderful philosophy of Dr. Ricketts to... <laughs> so, uh, now... Thank you all for joining in. Today uh, we have with us Dr. Sergio and... Uh, uh, sorry for yesterday because uh, yesterday we had a huge uh, technical error. So I uh, really apologize to all the attendees who came yesterday, but we could not run the webinar. So today, uh, without wasting any much time, uh, let me just introduce you to Dr. Sergio Sambataro. He is from Italy. And thank you, Dr. Sergio, for sparing your time and uh, teaching us the approach, bioprogressive approach for correcting the class two in permanent dentition. Uh, yeah. Hello, nice. Dr. Nelson. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, uh, Dr. Sergio is basically an adjunct professor at the University of Insubria and is also director of Centro di Orthodontia e Gnathologia COS. Sorry for my pronunciation if I'm wrong. Uh, Great. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Sergio is an adjunct professor for a postgraduate program in orthodontics. Uh, he has received his DDS from University of Catania and graduated from Catania University with the advanced speciality certificate and master degrees in orthodontics. He is actively collaborated with Professor Robert Murray Ricketts at the American Institute of Bioprogressive Education in the development of new brackets and orthodontic wires. Uh, Dr. Sambataro academic experience includes lecturing as a guest professor in numerous universities, including University of Insubria, University of Santiago, University of Messina, and University of Cairo. Uh, his orthodontic speciality practice is in Catania, Italy, and he's also a director of COS, as I said. Thank you, Dr. Sergio, Professor Sergio, for joining in. We have an uh, eminent panelist today with us, Dr. Uh, Enrique Garcia from Venezuela. Uh, and we have Dr. Uh, Nelson from Brazil. Let me just introduce you guys to Dr. Enrique. Hello, Dr. Enrique. Thanks. For Hello, joining. how are you? I'm fine. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet uh, you and, and nice to participate. Thank you. It's our pleasure. Dr. Enrique is an orthodontist from Central University of Venezuela. He's a po former professor of the orthodontics department of Central University of Venezuela. And he's also a former president of Venezuelan Orthodontic Society and lecturer in bioprogressive and multi-loop orthodontic approach. Good to have you here, Dr. Uh, Enrique. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank and you so much. We have Dr. Nelson from Sao Paulo, Brazil. He's a professor uh, of a dental school in Sao Paulo, as well as having a private practice uh, in Brazil. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Nelson, for joining in. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah, without wasting much time, uh, let me just uh, get it over to Dr. Sergio. It's all yours, Dr. Sergio. Good Thank to go. you very much. Thank you to everybody. Thank you for the kind invitation. It's a great honor for me sharing my experience in uh, bioprogressive uh, science. And uh, I want to say hello from uh, Dr. Daniele Vanni, that is the president from, of the Italian uh, Bioprogressive Society, and uh, from the Professor Capriolo and the Professor Cicciu from uh, respectively University of Insubria and the University of Messina. And uh, thank you, Eric and Nelson. Uh, they are a uh, uh, great friend. And so uh, to me, uh, uh, 
sharing my knowledge with them. It's uh, really a great community. So uh, give me your comments. Uh, and it would be an, uh, an really great uh, uh, honor uh, to uh, have your opinion. And so stop me when you consider it's uh, uh, the time. Uh, don't, don't worry, and uh, we can uh, discuss uh, during uh, the presentation and uh, uh, also at the end of the presentation. And uh, I uh, speak about uh, the, the approach that uh, we have in class two, malocclusion in the permanent dentition. And first of all, I want to define uh, orthodontics. Orthodontics uh, is uh, just the, uh, the branch of uh, the uh, DT and the other, by definition, by Dr. Ricketts, it's a skeletal neuromuscular connective and the epithelial alteration. And uh, we know three types of orthopedics. We know the natural, that is the growth, induced, that is uh, the, the treatment that we perform during the growth, and the surgical one. And uh, so we deal of uh, today all this. For some people, it's uh, really, really small. For me, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot. We have a great opportunity to modify all this. And so I want to uh, expose uh, the, the possibility that uh, uh, we have in uh, class two uh, malocclusion. This is from Ricketts. And uh, here you can see that uh, all, uh, all is missing teeth and the alveolar process. So one definition of alveolar process is the bone that supports the teeth. We here, we have not point B, we have not point A, are all alveolar, alveolar points. And so to me, the answer to my profession uh, was uh, mainly, uh, I, I, I learned for, from uh, Dr. Ricketts from the progressive science. It is not a specific technique. It is a combination of various modalities. A low body we, we use traditionally, edgewise, that means just a bracket with a rectangular wire. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh. Sorry for this. Oh, okay, Dr. Sergio. Okay, yes. So the focus is not concerned uh, with the type of the bracket employed, but how it is be used, where it is applied, or uh, what is to precede it and the difference deemed possible in the objective deemed uh, possible. And uh, by resistance uh, is also uh, 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 characterized dealing with the biological variation. There are few laws that can be applied. And the principles is a general truth that is uh, most often trustworthy, but not without exemption. And back in the 60s, Ricketts listed these um, 30 principles that are basically define what is the bioprogressive science. And the first principle is love your present, follow the truth, and maintain peace. This is uh, great because uh, when we go to work, uh, we, we are happy to work, we love the profession. And we appreciate this, me, this uh, 
uh, job, especially in this period of lockdown, that we, we, we was very, very far from our patients. So now we can uh, uh, define what is uh, uh, class one, class two, and class three. In the back, uh, in the um, uh, last century, at the beginning of last century, Engel defined class two like, like this occlusion because he was convinced that the maxilla, that the upper jaw, and that the upper molar was stable, fixed in the cranium, and you cannot move. In fact, uh, he, uh, he considered the yugal process like the key ridge. He called the yugal process the key ridge because it was uh, uh, considered that the upper molar was fixed in the, in the base of the uh, maxilla. So it defines also class two like distal occlusion. So the problem was the mandible, not the maxilla. And the rickets after the big uh, scientific investigation that he performed with, by the computer back uh, in the 60s, he classified the malocclusion from the lower molar from the and uh, again uh, he used to uh, study the malocclusion uh, using by using the composites and uh, this is a composite of uh, 40 patients class one at the age uh, age of eight and these are 34 patients same age high convex so if we superimpose we can notice the components of class two malocclusion. And uh, the first component is the posterior cranial base that is longer, as you can see here, okay, in class two. The anterior cranial base is longer. And the chin is, uh, is uh, backward two degrees. And if you can see the mandible in class two, the mandible is longer because it's bended. It's bended uh, uh, backward. Mm -hmm. But the upper jaw position is the main difference. The upper jaw position, as you can see here, is the main difference that you can see. The upper incisors is more protruded. The lower incisors are more retruded. The lower molars are more distal. And I add two more components. And thanks to uh, the point out this aspect, uh, I show that the upper molars are more retruded. This means that class two have a, 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 a different inclination of a plane. But at, the, at that age, and this is uh, Sato, he point out very, very clearly in this article published in the American Journal, the difference with the inclination of the occlusal plane. And this consistent, this data. So we have a very steep occlusal plane in class two and a very flat occlusal plane in class three. And again, this is from Sato, but uh, I collect and I, I, I put all this data in the same slides. And to me, it's a very clear this. In the middle, you can see the, the class one and you can see the, er the normal eruption of the molar during the growth and the chin can, can go uh, uh, forward and downward mm -hmm. along the facial axis. In the class three, you can see that we have uh, an, a, a great eruption of the upper molar. And so the, 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 this is, uh, to, to Sato is uh, the, the reason for the develop, development of the class three. In this way, the chin can develop uh, downward, but forward. And the opposite, you can see that in class two, we have not eruption. We have, we have not a great eruption of the upper molar. 
And so this is uh, e focused very, very clearly this aspect in class two. And uh, together with uh, Ricketts' uh, knowledge uh, uh, components in the class two. And in turn, this inclination of the occlusal plane plays a role in the uh, uh, in, in the um, uh, assessment by the bone of the cranium, and especially in the orientation of the temporal bone. That the, in uh, class two, this is in a uh, circle uh, with the uh, extension of the um, uh, uh, sphenoid bone and through the vomeret and through the maxilla again. In the, in the maxilla and the, in the occlusal plane. In the opposite, we can explain also the class three. So we, during uh, this presentation, uh, will uh, uh, apply uh, uh, and uh, will uh, 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 some uh, uh, Prince by Rickets uh, many, many years ago. And one that is very, very important is to unlock the malocclusion and uh, keep it unlocked. We can also stress about this uh, new therapy is to lower the occlusal plane. So if you want to control the vertical dimension and if you want to control Can you hear me? I, we can hear you, but your screen has gone. Has gone, okay. You have to share. Uh, Dr. Nelson, can you hear us? Yes, yes. perfect. We, we can hear. You have to share your screen again, Dr. Sergio. Maybe Sergio connection is not so good. Yes. yes. Okay. okay. Can you hear me clearly, although you, we, my, my connection? Uh, 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 do, do you have a microphone? Microphone? No, I haven't. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Yeah, we, can hear or you. No? we can hear you. We can hear you. No problem. Okay. 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 Thank you. Sorry. So the evidence-based class two therapy is to lower the occlusal plane. So use mechanics that can maintain the lower molar. Uh, down. Mm -hmm. Do not extrude the lower molar. Okay. And avoid all the mechanics that, that tends to extrude the uh, uh, lower molar. And this is now, it's a data. Look, Ricketts just uh, have an intuition back in the 52. He said, I don't know. He said, I don't know why, but if the occlusal plane is flat, and the, if you don't extrude the lower molar, you will, you will see that the mandible can grow uh, downward and forward in class two. But if you extrude the, the lower molar or intrude the upper molar that it's the same, you will see that the mandible start to rotate, rotate it open. And the, it, it, it showed this many, many, many times. And uh, also Bowery this, uh, do this back in 1981, and many, many others, many, many, many others. And uh, there is now we have a lot, a lot of uh, bibliography in this, uh, in this uh, topic. And here there are you, Nelson and uh, Enrique, uh, that uh, you, you compare the, uh, the outcome from the treatment with uh, uh, eye pool and uh, uh, cervical decker. And cervical decker showed more favorable changes, mandible growth that were statistically significant when compared with untreated growth models. And the, the, the key is the extrusion of the upper molar that is performed with the, the cervical edica. And also, this is uh, some uh, uh, a couple of years ago, and in, in, in the group 
that we collect that are uh, uh, dolicofacial uh, uh, patient that uh, we have a significant uh, uh, counter uh, clockwise rotation of the mandible in this patient uh, treated by uh, cervical etica. And uh, again, in the, in the same sample, we, we, want, we, mm, uh, we focus uh, on the occlusal plane. And uh, uh, in the, the occlusal plane, we have uh, a, a difference that is uh, significant uh, in the uh, sample treated again with the cervical etica. And this is a back, this is my PhD thesis. And uh, you can see the amount of extrusion. This is a composite. The amount of extrusion of the upper molar, and this is compensated by the uh, um, uh, vertical growth of the ramus. This is how you have to manage uh, the cervical etica. And this is uh, Ricketts back in the 52. Uh, I, I, uh, I say, he said, look here, the chin is forward and the uh, condyle is uh, uh, upward. Mm? And the same, same thing, uh, Bjork. And when the condyle is backward, the chin goes backward. So the, uh, man, the condyle grows upward and uh, uh, forward. If you want that the chin can display forward in, uh, in, in, in the space. And uh, after 17 years, Bjork uh, published the same result. It seems that the, the, uh, the, the draw are the same. And this is our traced from uh, uh, Ricketts. And uh, to me, Bjork confused the profession because he took two extreme. Uh, here you can see that this is a very severe brachyfacial patient is 100 of facial axis. This is not normal, okay? And so it's, it's, uh, it's like, a, it's a class two deep bite, but he has a big, very big chin. Mm -hmm. He is a severe brachyfacial. And this is a severe dolicofacial with, uh, he starts 77 to facial, of facial axis and he arrived 80s of our facial axis. So this is a not normal growth. These are extreme that uh, cannot explain the normal growth to me. Uh, anyway, this is uh, from Frustman that uh, he showed that, that the, the growth uh, came from the anterior and uh, part of the condyle, anterior and superior part. So Ricketts uh, stated the decompression theory. If you decompress this part, the mandible can, can explain explain the potential growth. If you compress this part, you uh, influence it in uh, uh, back from uh, Salvo. <laughs> and it's very, very nice uh, uh, to me to explain uh, how to manage the, the class two. So you extrude the upper molar, you correct if you are during the growth the position of the maxilla, you affect the mandible because uh, you decompress the condyle and you must to avoid the contact, the anterior interferences, the contact in the uh, incisors. And uh, in this way, uh, you can uh, uh, allow the, uh, um, the, the um, the mandible that can can grow up, uh, downward, and uh, forward. This is how we uh, usually uh, show this uh, uh, theory. So visualize your objective in class two. Push backward, downward the maxilla if you are uh, obviously during the grow. Lower the occlusal plane. That is the key point in. Uh, class two correction, promote vertical growth of the ramus, so the mandible can adapt forward. I, I, I know that Sado loved this uh, uh, mandibular or condy, condylar adaptation. 
and proceed in stages. May objective but must be solved first. In this way, the secondary objectives will become easier. Therefore, staging approach is more biologic than a fixed tie up with the straight wire. And so the staging matrix is that uh, we have four stages and eight step. And so we have not a sequence of uh, uh, wires, but we have a logical sequence in the treatment and uh, 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 Gugino loves to say to see degree of the difficulty. So the differences with the straight wire instead of alignment are mainly orthopedics first, arch length control, deep bite correction by anterior intrusion, and this is also a topic that is different from the SATO approach and positioning of the arches based on skeletal relation. And so you must to standardize the approach, but in order to uh, custom, to individualize uh, and customize. So three key concepts in today's world, this is from Pugino, are individualization, prevention, and simplicity. Individualization is the ability to adapt to the needs or special circumstances of an individual or basic difference between individuals. Prevention is the action of stopping something from happening or arising. It is one of the key concepts in today's healthcare. And simplicity. Simplicity is a thing that is plain, natural, or easy to understand. And the technology and the information overload demands this today. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication and therefore difficult to achieve. Simplicity requ requires systems and keep things simple through systems. Instead, simplicistic is making something complicated seem simple by ignoring important part of it. And to me, some approach in, uh, in, uh, in, in those days are too simplistic. They demand to the, to the company, they demand to the appliances uh, all the treatment. Mm? You know all this. So, this is simplicistic, okay? Oh, this is, uh, was uh, something from the, the, the past and there was uh, this approach to me, simplicistic, that, that, uh, it, uh, it, it, but it, it doesn't uh, work. Mm? It doesn't work. This is simple. This is uh, really simple. If you, if you, uh, give uh, an iPhone to a smartphone to a child two years old, she can do everything in uh, a couple of minutes. Okay, today we, are the, we have these uh, nine patients and uh, we want that uh, our friends from India uh, arrive on time for dinner. <laughs> there. <laughs> Enrique, for you it's early in the morning. <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> you can certainly do it. Yeah. Want that to arrive on time from breakfast. <laughs> breakfast, <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah. what, what time is there in Brazil, Nelson? The eight thirty a.m. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, so Enrique, is it five o'clock? No, breakfast. six 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 thirty. Six thirty in the Wait. morning. Okay. So first patient is Anna. So Anna is uh, class two division two. She is a uh, deep binding. Uh, she has very square uh, arch, lower arch and uh, upper arch. And uh, we are waiting from uh, upper canines and from uh, other uh, teeth. Uh, she's very, very symmetrical. And uh, she has a mesiofacial uh, 
brachy tenden tendency mm, uh, pattern. She is an easy case, uh, nothing difficult. So uh, to her, she had a gummy smile and misalignment. And uh, to me, she is a class two division two, deep pied, mesiofacial brachy tendency, and the lower arch retrusion and lower facial height reduction. <clears throat> In green, you can see the long range focus. In red, you can see the, the objective. Though, so if you superimpose, you can visualize your uh, treatment uh, design. So we must intrude the, the incisors. You, we must intrude the upper and the lower and torque the upper incisors and uh, uh, um, allow that the mandible can grow forward. And uh, so uh, we can uh, uh, classify Anna like an easy case. Mm? There is no difficult. And so uh, we want, we plan these mechanics. We want blow the anchorage and put the lower denture forward in order to correct the class two. And we do this just with just two utility arch, a two by two in the upper and a two by four in the lower, just for 12 months, it's one year. And uh, this is, uh, 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 and I love this approach because uh, uh, to me, this is uh, very simple. Now you can uh, use everything. You can use uh, uh, aligners, you can use a straight wire, you can use uh, lingual, uh, uh, or uh, everything, you can use everything because you unlock the, the, the and uh, uh, you, uh, you, you make things simple. And uh, this is when we finish this is the arches. Uh, she has not the upper uh, wisdom teeth, very symmetrical and a very, very nice uh, profile and position of the uh, denture, the lower denture, the upper denture. And in the superimposition analysis, uh, uh, you can see the, that we open the bite uh, with the intrusion of the uh, incisors, but uh, um, sorry, sorry. No. Wait. No problem, Dr. Sergio. Yes. Uh, if you have a multiple device attached to your Wi-Fi, uh, uh, I would advise uh, that uh, let other devices uh, get disconnected. Because... No, I have the Wi-Fi. Maybe uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you clearly. No problem. Okay. And here you can see that we correct the class two by mandibular adaptation. We don't distalize the upper molar, okay? We maintain the position of the lower molar. We extrude the, the upper molar, but we correct class two by mandibular posturing, by mandibular uh, uh, adaptation, by uh, the action of uh, elastics and the, the mechanics that uh, we use. So we use the from uh, one year, the utility arch, then we wait for the permanent addition, and then we complete with a straight wire the case. Very, very simple case. This is uh, before and after. It's just to uh, show you and uh, to uh, explain the approach and the mechanics. This is uh, before and after, beautiful class one, very symmetrical case. Okay, this is uh, before and after. And this is uh, six, six years, nine months later. So it's a very, very stable case. Mm -hmm. Pregnant patient, it's uh, Luca. This 
we are waiting for uh, my connection. Okay. Okay, Luca he is also a class two, division two. Look at the position of the uh, upper incisors. You can see also the deep bite, severe deep bite here, crowding. Mm -hmm. And uh, here, look, uh, he, he has a severe crowding uh, in the upper arch and also in the lower arch. In the lower arch, it's almost 10 millimeters, and uh, it's, uh, the same in the upper arch. And uh, look the bad position of the upper canines, but we can see better in the frontal head film. You can see that uh, uh, the, the, the very clearly the position of the, the crown of the, and the inclination of the upper canine. And uh, as you know, I um, uh, uh, performed a method to at the age eight, uh, is uh, older, but uh, at age eight, you can predict the uh, impaction of the upper canine. Right. And look the blood position of the uh, upper uh, uh, canine here, here. Instead, the position of the right canine is, uh, is good. And uh, Luca is, uh, has a tendency of a brachyfacial patient, but uh, the lower arch protrusion, and uh, he is uh, really, uh, really a deep bite. Uh, and his problem was that uh, he didn't see his uh, lower incisors. Uh, he's a class two, division two, brachyfacial, and also with the lower facial eight reduction. This is the, in the green, uh, you can see the long range forecast. In the red, you can see the treatment, the visual treatment goal. And as you can see, you, we must to expand the upper arch and also the lower arch and push the lower incisors forward and intrude the lower and the upper incisors and give torque to the upper incisors. In this way, the mandible can adapt forward. And it's a, lit, a little bit more difficult that, uh, than Anna. So it's, uh, we, we, we put here in our uh, bell curve. And this is the progress. Just two utility arches with the elastics in the utility arch. So we, we change the, 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 the pattern, but we start with the quadrilix uh, in the upper arch. So first we expand the upper arch and then we apply two utility arch and uh, you can see that then we manage the position of the arches uh, with uh, the uh, elastics, class two elastics. And this is uh, when we finish the treatment and you can see that uh, now the bite is uh, really, really uh, open, uh, beautiful smile. And uh, he now can display his uh, teeth and his uh, smile. It's, uh, he is retruded. We push forward a lot the lower dentition, but uh, he, ha he has a very, very strong chin. These are the arches, this is the panoral, and the look is very, very symmetrical, and uh, he has a good profile. He was minus four, the APO, uh, the distance between the lower incisors and the APO plane, and now is minus one. We pushed a lot forward, uh, but he has a very tight lips, and the uh, uh, look how the mandible went forward. So again, 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 the class two correction was due to the mandible. So you think, we think, you know, sagittally, 
In, instead, there is something else that uh, can happen if uh, you manage uh, in the way that I show you with the extrusion of the, uh, the, upper, uh, the upper arch, the mandible can adapt forward. So you, when you open the bite, you extrude the upper arch, you maintain the lower, polar, lower molar uh, in the same position. You the mandibles, the quadrilix near the uh, upper and the lower utility arch for with the elastic for ten months. Then wait one year, and then we complete with the straight wire with our approach and our. Uh, Prescription. Um, okay. I have a huge presentation. This is one year and uh, eight months later. I hope I have uh, another progress. This is uh, three years and six months later. So it's very stable. The bite is very, very stable. So for this reason, we are convinced, we discussed a lot with Nelson and Rike also about the correction of deep bite by intrusion of the frontal teeth. This is before and after, before and after. Look how the amount of intrusion uh, that uh, we perform. Also, we change all the arch form before and after. And uh, here you can see the sequence. And it's uh, very, very stable. We are proud of the stability of uh, this uh, case, cases. Another case. It is Antonella. She is uh, class two, both sides. She has all the teeth. She is very symmetrical. And uh, uh, she is mesiofacial. Mesiofacial, she had a good inclination of the occlusal plane. And but she has a deep bite, and the upper lip to me is uh, too much uh, protruded in the space. And uh, she has a little bit of uh, uh, misalignment and crowding in the uh, lower arch. And uh, also, she is class two, division two, deep bite, mesiofacial with the lower arch uh, uh, retrusion. And the uh, computer suggests to me to extract, in order to correct the class two, the upper uh, premolars. Uh, I don't like, I don't like this, especially in brachyfacial tendency or in mesiofacial tendency. I don't like to finish in a molar class two. And I'm convinced that uh, with these mechanics, you can distalize as much as you, you want. So, I, I, I didn't perform the extraction of the upper premolars to uh, correct the, uh, the class two. And uh, to me, this is uh, an easy case. I put in the, in the middle of the, of the curve and uh, I want uh, to individualize the mechanics for uh, uh, Antonella. Okay. Okay. And uh, I put utility arch in order to open the bites, but I'm still in class two because I have no growth. So I'm still in class two. And then I remove the upper utility arch and I start the sectional mechanics. And now I'm in a beautiful class one. 
in uh, both sides. You can see the, the position of the lower molars that they are in uh, anchorage. And uh, here uh, uh, with the salvo, we uh, patent uh, this instrument in order to easily select the elastics based on the distance that you must to, uh, to cover. And uh, number two means uh, one eight elastics, number three means uh, three, three sixteen, number four means uh, one four, and number five means uh, five sixteen inch in order to select the right uh, elastics. This is we patent here in Italy this article where we explain how we uh, uh, obviously reduct so all the uh, merchology because we have a lot a lot of elastics but uh, we just with the three elastics we can cover uh, uh, all the distance so we can uh, we can uh, uh, we can treat all the malocclusions this is uh, after uh, one year uh, here you can see a two uh, by six and then the classical uh, bioprogressive approach, we intrude uh, and retract with the light intruder retractor, the upper arch. Then uh, we must to connect uh, the section with the <coughs> part. And uh, then we finish uh, the uh, the case in this way, and the, now the bite is uh, really reopen. The smile is a beautiful smile, and uh, now we must to remove all the wisdom teeth. <clears throat> and uh, you can see the very very good position of the lower incisors, and uh, how is uh, beautiful the position of the upper and the lower lip. Uh, the patient is very symmetrical. And uh, here the superimposition uh, uh, analysis and again, 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 when the, the patient, uh, uh, after the growth, we correct the class two by uh, a little movement of the demand. Little is by distalization of the, uh, of the upper molar, but uh, with the position of the uh, also of the mandible. So what it, if I uh, uh, extract the upper premolar was a great, great mistake because I, I reduct the support uh, of the, the denture, of the posterior denture uh, to that allow the mandible to uh, adapt uh, forward. And this is after two years. This is after nine years and five months. Mm. Very, very stable case. Very, very stable. I know that uh, you don't like the, the, <laughs> the retention, uh, the lingual, uh, the lower lingual form. It's uh, really, uh, to me, it's the key of the medication, the, the, the process of stabilization of the uh, dentition after uh, uh, decoration. This is uh, before and after. The presentation is uh, too, I'm too fast or keynote is uh, too uh, slow. <laughs> no, no. This is uh, before and after. Sergio. Yes, tell me. Uh, do you want to answer, uh, because you have some questions regarding these cases. And yes. maybe, maybe it's a good moment to, to answer some of them. Yes. Sure. For example, uh, um, Dr. Jo Min Chong 
it's asking what is the wire size in the intrusion arch? So it's, um, uh, in uh, I can... use hollow only 16 by 16 Elgeroy blue for all nice. all my cases. Okay, El blue blue Elgeroy blue Elgeroy blue Elgeroy 16 square 16 square okay. Elgeroy blue all my cases okay. with the bioprogressive approach the classical one is by uh, 16 by 16. Okay, next question, Sonny Gupta. Um, in the Anna case, Anna case, yes, uh, she saw some uh, distally molar tipping. So yes. she's asking if this is an effect of the utility arch. Obviously, this is an effect of utility arch, and this is the key That's point right. for this this question because the Boston people think that when you use a, a lower utility arch in order to correct the bite by intrusion, you push, you push the lower incisors forward. And this isn't true. It's not true during the growth. If uh, you put the utility arch in the last tooth that there is in the mouth, and yes. you can allow the lower molar to go backward by tipping and by upriding, the, the lower incisors will go, uh, uh, will go backward. In That's that right. case, maybe right. as a contraindication because <laughs> we, we want to push the lower incisor <laughs> forward. So uh, sometimes we need any stabilization or, uh, or something like that. But uh, just uh, some people, they don't catch this. So the, 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 and the, the molar upridings are very, very, are the key of success and the, the, the key of the position also uh, of the yes. lower incisors. Sato point out that the upriding of the uh, posterior uh, uh, molars in order uh, to change the inclination of the occlusal plane. But another side effect, if we call a side effect, is uh, uh, to control the, uh, the position of the uh, lower incisors. Excellent. Uh, I think that you can answer by the same uh, response two questions. Um, Dr. Sadia Naurin is asking, um, how do, do you manage to control the extrusion of the lower molar? And Dr. Ho Ming Chong is asking in the Lucas case, why do you use class two elastic when you mention that the lower molar extrusion should be avoided? So I think these two questions yes. has to do with cortical anchorage. So you yeah. can answer. Yes. Oh, obviously, you have a uh, cortical anchorage in the lower. So you just uh, like it's ankylosed uh, molars, lower molars. So you, 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 you can, uh, it's difficult that you can extrude if you put the lower molars in cortical anchorage. And also you can manage with the extrusion of the upper teeth because the utility arch without control that you have in the upper uh, the, perform an extrusion of the upper molars also. Yes, may, maybe maybe some colleagues are not familiar with cortical anchorage, and yes. we, can you yes. can you explain by. How do you yeah. activate the lower utility arch in order to achieve cortical anchorage? Yes, I want to say before the, the, the biologic uh, uh, premise. The biologic premise is to put the molar against the heavy bone mm? and the under, under the, underneath the cortical bone, the heavy plate that we have in the mandible. So you need, you need the expansion, you need the distorotation, and you, you, you need the torque 
and uh, you right. need also feedback okay in this and you can uh, give all this information to the utility arch in this way you will avoid the extrusion during class two correction by elastics but uh, we are uh, we are in a easy cases because these patients are brachyfacial tendency. So we, we, you will not see a lot of extrusion. The cortical anchorage is very nice to see in dolicofacial patient. That's in the, and I'll show you now. So in the other case, during the presentation, I'll show you how to manage other, other uh, uh, different patterns that are more difficult than uh, this one. Okay. 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 Nice. Nice. Uh, there's another question. Ra Rakesh Cool. It's the doctor. Which component of class two malocclusion can be corrected before 10 years of age? And what components, what components respond better after 10 years of age? Uh, absolutely the upper jaw position. The upper jaw position is very, very, and if you correct the upper jaw position, the way that we do, and uh, uh, in, in this way, the mandible can respond and can adapt forward. So this uh, obviously is uh, the, 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 the main, is the key factor in uh, uh, class two correction. And uh, obviously uh, Ricketts speculated in the uh, correction of the um, uh, posterior and the anterior cranial base. He had some theories about uh, the, 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 uh, the affection of the temporal bone for the the correction of the posterior uh, canyon base and uh, also the anterior canyon base, but uh, are really, really not, not a big uh, amount of changing that you can do during the class two correction. Okay. Next question, Dr. Saha asks, some of uh, class two division two cases, we found attrition attrition of the teeth. That means maybe present of, uh, presence of functional shifts. How I correct it? Uh, I correct, I, I don't correct. <laughs> I just correct the occlusion. Yes. And uh, okay. Sato, this, uh, he, he showed us uh, very, very clearly how the, the, the occlusion can, uh, can uh, preserve the, the good occlusion can preserve the integrity of the, the, the teeth and the, of the entire system. So I, I want to correct the occlusion and then it, it will be fixed everything obviously nicely with the, the, with the function, but after obviously the correction. Okay. okay. Uh, I think that uh, next question you already answered I'm because sorry. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. yeah, Doctor Alhabi is asking how do you prevent the extrusion of the lower molar, and you already explain yeah. yeah. explain yeah. yeah. with cortical anchorage. So, so can you, Doctor Sergio, can you just explain like yeah. uh, uh, for preparing for the uh, uh, this uh, cortical anchorage, the lower molars, the mandibular molars. How much deep back, how much torque, and how much rotation? Okay. Okay. So I put, I put like uh, 30, 30, 40 degrees of torque. Okay. Sorry. Uh, I think there is some. Yeah, okay. Please go ahead. Okay. 30, 40 degrees of torque. Okay and uh, uh, 12 degrees of distal rotation, 15 degrees of uh, uh, tips of uh, expansion. Yes. Expansion, okay. Maybe Nelson. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I can help you a little bit here, Sergio. Yes. Everybody can hear me? Yes, yes, we yes. can. Yes. 
So I, I see uh, those questions are very related to uh, diagnostics, you know? I believe that the people don't know exactly uh, how to perform, uh, especially the rickets analysis. So here is the key point. And they don't make the correlation between the bones movement, the teeth movement, and the mandible adaptation on space. This is uh, what I believe. They are just thinking mechanically too much. And they don't really understand that the correlation between occlusion and the control of the teeth will affect the whole thing, not just uh, local, the class one or class two like angle. As you introduced in the beginning, uh, people just focusing too much the teeth and not really concerning in how the adaptation of the mandible is gonna happen. So this is maybe the key thing. They don't really understand this. And I think that the goal, I, I, I will give them an advice for everybody that the goal here is to always uh, drive your mechanic knowing very well how is the situation of the lower facial height because Ricketts has this big pearl in his analysis which is the lower facial height this is this is from Ricketts from point xi to pm which is very stable point on the chain and also to the anterior nasal spine. So you can have here what he called the oral envelope. And this is where you want, this is where you're gonna play exactly what you mentioned in the very beginning with the alveolar bone. So the whole thing we will adapt to this. So man, you just need to, to have this in mind. You have this too big or too short. You have to play inside this oral envelope but the people must have the knowledge of the Ricketts analysis. This is the key factor. Exactly. So if you don't understand the, the uh, cephalometric yeah. diagnostics, you are really missing a lot of this lecture. This is the, the real point. But surgery, so the control is mechanical, but the reaction is biological. Right. That's Thank the key you. point. Yes, yes, I totally agree. Nelson, yes, this is a very, um, this sentence, it uh, summarizes the, 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 the response that we have. And uh, just to like, only with the superimposition analysis, uh, we can understand what's going on. Because uh, we are convinced to push the, the, the upper molar backward, instead it's three-dimensional. And the vertical component is the great component. The extrusion will correct the class two. How? How with the mandibular adaptation? It is great, and I think that um, AJ, we we must to focus on this because uh, you can you can throw in the mouth in brachyphasia everything you want, and you you want to correct in a biological way. Uh, you you want to predict. The, the results, okay? You, you, you must to study biology, you must to- I, uh, I think the uh, rest of the questions we can take a little later. Uh, yes, yeah. yes, thank yes. you. Yes, 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 I agree because maybe with the cases, yes. next cases will answer some of the questions. Yes, uh, whatever the relevant questions yes. are there, yes. we can take those questions. Thank you. Okay, yes. Go ahead, Dr. Sergio. Another case. Okay, thank you. There is uh, Damiano. He, he is class two, full class two, full class two, both sides. It's uh, very, very uh, in the class two, and uh, we are not a lot of crowding, upper and lower, and uh, we haven't uh, the wisdom teeth, and she is a little bit asymmetrical and so we just can imagine that uh, he has uh, a compression on the right side he is look the pattern seems seems dolly ten or mesiofacial but he has a very square mandible and as nelson pointed out before 
the low fascia rate is 38. Mm? So if uh, you can see, this is uh, 38. And uh, so the, the mandible is a square. It's like a brachyfacial mandible in a major fascial pattern. So it's uh, very strange. So you must combine the, all the data you can see here, and uh, you, you, you must to, uh, pay attention to a lot, a lot of, uh, uh, of um, uh, uh, trick and uh, numbers that uh, the, the, the analysis uh, can, uh, uh, can give to you. And the look also the lower denture that is backward, then the intrusion, the extrusion of the uh, lower incisor. So with, this is a severe deep bite. So we have class two, severe deep bite, mesiofascial, but I, I, I said brachyfascial latency because uh, the mandible is brachy, lower arch retrusion and the lower fascial eight reduction. And here we have uh, uh, the prediction in, the, in green and the treatment in, in uh, red. And uh, we lower arch, but we also we want to intrude, but we want a little bit distalize the uh, upper arch, and also we want to expand the arches. So we put uh, here uh, uh, our uh, patient uh, uh, Damiano, and uh, we call this uh, kind of a correction reciprocal. So we want to uh, use sectional mechanics in the upper and the minimum anchorage in the lower. This is what we did. Look the amount of this upper arch. Here I lose a little bit of uh, control in these, uh, in these uh, molars. Uh, but uh, we, I, I'm still in a class two in the canine. This also happened often happen in the adult patients or uh, not in the growing patient. Uh, but here we have a lot, a lot of space. So we can uh, close this space easily in order uh, to fit uh, the, uh, the denture in a beautiful class one. And this is uh, for students. This is the mechanics that uh, we, we use. We intrude, then we want to stabilize the molar with a little section here. Then uh, we can uh, band the uh, upper arch. We put the section and we want to activate the section. And then we put the elastics and the roll of the elastics, it don't, don't push forward the canine. Mm -hmm. And all the force of the elastics obviously is uh, uh, backward in the molar. And so we want to activate the ear in these corners and we want to elongate uh, the, the distance of this uh, section. And so we have a lot of space between the teeth. And then we can close this space with a straight section. And in class two, we want to over treat. So we maintain the class two elastics. And then we start to correct the position of the upper teeth with the light intruder retractor. And then classically, we intrude the lower canine and now it's time to put brackets in the uh, lower arch in order to coordinate the arches and here we can use a straight section or we can use a pick back and easily uh, we can finish with uh, a straight wire or if uh, we have some uh, misalignment uh, we can put uh, here between uh, the connection here in the canine, canine uh, areas some uh, T loops or uh, delta loops uh, in order to uh, level uh, the, uh, the arch. And this is the classical bioprogressive uh, approach that uh, uh, we use in, uh, during the correction of uh, uh, class two. Here we finish the case, look uh, how beautiful is the occlusion and uh, 
how beautiful is uh, the smile, the position of the frontal teeth. These are the, uh, the arches. This is the frontal, lateral. And uh, here you can see that uh, we correct uh, by a little bit of distalization, a little bit of uh, forward movement of the lower denture, but uh, we have a, a bad side effect because the mandible uh, didn't adapt uh, forward as we expected. We open a little bit, like uh, uh, one degree, the fascial axis. And only if you do the superimposes analysis, you can grow, you can understand, you can uh, talk about the cases, not just before and after without any analysis. So this is uh, our mechanics. Uh, utility arches and uh, sectional mechanics, and then uh, finish the case. This is after uh, three years and two months. Uh, my colleague uh, Massimo Lalicata uh, performed the, the correction of the, the reconstruction of the upper central with uh, some composite. This is uh, before and after, before and after, before and after. And uh, now the other patient can come in. Now we have, uh, we are all late. We have Marta. Marta is uh, a very nice uh, girl. And we learn a lot from uh, this case. And uh, she hasn't a bad malocclusion. She is a very, very, very easy case, uh, if you see this way. Mm? She has a perio problem here in the uh, upper incisors, mm? uh, bad position of misalignment, but very, very not severe crowding. Mm? But uh, she has a TMJ problem on the left side. Mm? She has uh, uh, a lock on the left side. But she is major facial, good position of the lower incisors, very, very nice. And in the right side, she has a compression. Oh, sorry. You can... Uh... No. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, oh, okay. we hear you. Yes, okay. clear. And uh, this is the panoral. These, those are the arches. And look, in the left side, uh, you have a distal displacement of the joint and a compression on the right side. And uh, if you ask to open the mouth, uh, the, you have a lock on the left side. You have a normal, normal uh, opening of the mouth in the uh, right side and you have a lock on the left side. And uh, so we have uh, impacted the wisdom teeth, distance displacement and lock on the left side, superior displacement on the right side of the joint, a mandibular asymmetry, class two on the right side and a perio problem on the upper central uh, incisors. And uh, this is the planning. And so we want to correct uh, also the, the by, by intrusion of the upper and the low. And uh, we put uh, here just for a TMJ problem, uh, but the arches are very, very, very easy. And uh, so we plan sectional mechanics, but the maximum anchorage in the lower arch. And in order to unlock the, the um, 
TMJ on the left, we apply a bio template uh, and the, the patient wear uh, 24 hours uh, a day the bio template. And after one month, we ask, we remove the bio template that is fixed and we just, we want to check the interferences uh, of the bio in the upper central, as uh, you can see here, clearly. So the answer now is, uh, how can you manage this case? Do you want to extrude all the denture? You want to uh, trim the upper central? You want to extract maybe the upper central? Or you just want to apply a utility arch in the, in the upper central, and uh, now you want to give just a support here uh, on the on the especially on the right side, but you eliminate the very clearly the interferences. And now we can explain the perio problem because there was an interferences on this tooth. So now is an easy, very, very easy case. Uh, now we, we would then we, we put the, an upper utility arch, then uh, we remove the utility arch, we correct the class two by section mechanics, and then uh, we connect the arches uh, with the double delta in the right uh, in, in the left. And now if you check the joint, you have enough space in both joints. And now when you open the, when the patient, open the mouth, you can see that in the left sides, uh, we correct the, the, the lock. Now there is a normal ex ex excursion of the, uh, the mandible, both sides. Okay, we want to wait for my internet connection. No, it's uh, the keynote uh, presentation. It's right, too huge right. and so there are a lot of images right. and so right. it's not, not very fast. This is the control of the result and the look the symmetry that uh, we reach with this kind uh, of approach because uh, we give, we gave support to the right side of the mandible. This is, uh, those are the arch before and after, before and after. And uh, look, the, the frontal head film, now you can see that we have a symmetrical uh, mandible. It's a little bit, but uh, we are very proud of this because uh, we give support on the right side. We add uh, the lock on the left side but the, the, the asymmetry was in the, like in the, the, the side that we call the healthy side. Sometimes the health side, it's uh, as a, a compression because the patient prefer to bite in the other side. Okay, this is uh, before and after. As uh, you, uh, you can see that uh, we perform just a little bit of distalization, of beautiful control of the um, position of the mandible and the look how we can uh, we, we manage with the anything just with the occlusion so a beautiful occlusion is the base of the function of the a good function of the uh, apparatus so we start in a class two with the uh, compression of the uh, mandible and uh, by uh, the, the, the bio template we manage uh, the position of the mandible uh, first and uh, we uh, we detect the interferences that is in the upper central uh, incisors and so we correct just uh, uh, this uh, position with uh, this kind of mechanics that uh, to me is very, very, very simple. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and no simplistic uh, like uh, uh, other uh, approach. 
This is uh, Marta after, uh, after three years and uh, is a very, very stable case. And uh, I want to point uh, out uh, and I want to underline the beautiful smile and uh, how with the position of the upper premolars, uh, we can feel the buccal uh, corridors. Look, because in the bioprogressive pres prescription, we tucked the canine in, look the canine that it's in and the premolar, it's outside. In this way, we, you have a beautiful, beautiful smile. And, uh, and this is what uh, we found in nature. We published uh, a couple of years ago, this in the Journal of mm -hmm. Craniofacial uh, Surgical. And uh, we saw in untreated the patient uh, that the position of, uh, uh, of the premolars, uh, it's uh, uh, outward and the canine are tucked in is not the opposite as uh, the straight wire people love. But they haven't uh, any uh, anatomical uh, support. The other patient is uh, Davide. And uh, obviously, Davide is another uh, class 2 D bite, but is just uh, one side. Okay, and then now I want to show you how to correct one side class 2. No crowding, almost beautiful lower arch, and uh, is uh, symmetrical. And uh, uh, we have a good position of the lower incisors and the, his uh, mesiofacial or brachiofacial uh, tendency, as you can see. So uh, he is a subdivision with a deep bite. And uh, here there is our uh, treatment uh, planning when you superimpose. So we want to distalize more this uh, in one side. Okay, the other it's just a little bit. And so we put in the middle of uh, our curve, uh, Davide, it is uh, again an uh, easy case. And uh, again, First of all, we open the bite with two utility arch, then uh, we remove the upper utility arch and uh, we start to manage just one side with the sexual mechanics. We don't need all the brackets in the, in the mouse. We want to correct just the right side. Then we intrude again the canine, same mechanics. And then this is uh, uh, how to manage the correction of the, the mid midline. After uh, you distalize one side, you control the torque, that is uh, the, the checkpoint. Again, another difference with the straight pipe people. We use a positive torque in the upper canine, not negative torque, especially in class two correction. And uh, then we can uh, correct the midline with uh, a double delta. Uh, with uh, class two elastics, one side, class three elastic on the uh, other side. Or you can use, these are the activation, a uh, push and pull utility arch. On one side, you want to push uh, in order to correct the midline. So you design a utility arch in order to push from this side and to retract from the other side. And for this reason, uh, we call a push and pull arch. Here you can see the mechanics. You can see how we activated uh, in this side in order to push the dentition here and how we activated on the other side in order to retract and to correct the uh, midline. For this reason, I call push and uh, pull. Here there is, uh, we, we want to give some uh, more torque in the upper uh, uh, incisors 
This is uh, after a couple of years of treatment, a classical approach with the double delta after uh, the correction with the sectional mechanics and uh, with uh, uh, the uh, utility arches. Then uh, uh, we finish uh, uh, the case. Also, oh, and uh, here uh, uh, we don't like uh, the position of uh, obviously of this uh, canine uh, uh, ear and uh, ear, but uh, we are sure. Uh, because we have uh, the contact year 14, that uh, this contact uh, will develop during the, the years. And this is another reason because we love to use uh, the lingual arch, the lingual bar and the lower from uh, uh, premolar to uh, premolar. You can see the beautiful position of the lower incisors and the uh, symmetry. And uh, the beautiful uh, profile and uh, look uh, before and after. Before and after the symmetry. And in the superimposition analysis, uh, you can see that uh, we lose a little bit of control of the mandible, but uh, we uh, distalize and uh, this uh, extrusion. Uh, maybe is uh, the reason for uh, this uh, uh, mandibular uh, little bit disrotation. But you uh, uh, must to consider that we have a little bit of growth here. So it's uh, not uh, just extrusion, but is uh, uh, eruption too. This is uh, before and after. Before and after. And uh, before and after, you can see uh, the, the midline problem in the, at the beginning of the treatment, and then how we uh, manage with uh, that kind of uh, mechanics that uh, I showed you. We are waiting for uh, the presentation. Uh, thank you. Ah, Sì, 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 No, because I'll talk to myself mm -hmm. with drop, uh... Wait, if you have uh, some, uh, questions? some uh, uh, okay. questions, uh, we are we managing... We will check yeah. uh, around three, four questions as of now. Okay. Uh, Dr. Arijit Singh. So how to select the occlusal plane in deep bite cases? Pardon? How? How to select the occlusal plane Yes, yes, this is uh, uh, Ricketts uh, used to call this the true uh, buccal plane, true buccal plane. Take the cusps of the lower first molars and the lower first premolars uh, or uh, deciduous uh, teeth, and it's uh, uh, it's constant that the position of the lower uh, incisors is always uh, at the level of the occlusal plane. And the, the uh, canine is a little bit uh, up of this uh, occlusal plane. So we haven't of speed in the anterior part the dentition. We have the poor but split is in the molar, is the second molar, third molar. But the occlusal plane is just a straight. We, we haven't any, any occlusal uh, uh, plane uh, 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 curve. 
Okay, so uh, with this kind of uh, uh, of um, uh, uh, addition of occlusal pay, if you must correct the uh, the bite by intrusion of the upper incisors or intrusion of the lower incisors or both okay because uh, you 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 have um, uh, a referred plane that uh, can allow to uh, suggest this uh, uh, this kind uh, uh, of uh, approach. Okay. The next question is from Dr. Mohammad Anisur Rahman. Up to which age adult class two patients can be treated without premolar extraction? Like up to which age? Uh, up till which age you would treat a class two patient without premolar extraction? Always. I don't do always A any age. Adult patient. I don't extract upper premolars in order to correct the glass. I extract premolars, the upper second sometimes, but I usually perform for, for uh, uh, premolar extraction. But uh, when uh, and I don't, don't extract because I cannot digitalize, and then I don't extract for crowding, extract just for aesthetics. And this is another topic that the SATO approach, extract the premolars. Mm, things that um, uh, uh, never and always to me in uh, medicine doesn't exist. Uh, exist just uh, <laughs> Almost never, or almost uh, always. There are always uh, exemptions. Okay, the next question is about uh, regarding the protocol for extraction of third molars from Dr. Lana Safavata. Uh, of the wisdom team, yes. We, we do this, we, we, if, uh, if there is a space, okay, we, we like to maintain the third molars. If we have not space, uh, we, we, we extract. The, we decide uh, this very, very early, in an early stage. At the age of eight, sometimes that there is no space for the third molar, uh, we enucleate the, the because some, with the tip back that we give to the utility arch, sometimes there is the risk to impact the uh, the, the lower second against the, the wisdom tip. This is uh, a problem, and so uh, we, we want to uh, enucleate in those this case the third molar in an early stage. Uh, now, next question is uh, regarding uh, Antonella case. Yes. Uh, it is uh, like Dr. Arash wants to know that uh, how does extraction of upper premolars could impend autorotation of mandible, that is a counterclockwise rotation, as you have mentioned it? Yes, because uh, I suppose, obviously, because I don't know, I didn't extract, so I just suppose. And uh, because for the support, because I think that uh, the, the, the support of the mandible is given by the danger. So you, uh, if you reduce the support, of the denture, you can can have uh, um, and um, reduce the support uh, to the to the um, to the joint. Okay. Uh, how do you treat class two hyperdivergent cases? I I show you now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll keep it for your keynote. Yes. Yes. 
question yeah do you use tads for upper posterior segment distalization or it is only by your arch wire biomechanics i i don't uh, I, uh, i don't know tads <laughs> In plan, I use micro tads. No, I'm, I'm joking. I use tads when when I have I have teeth. If I have teeth, it's uh, I, I I don't I don't want to use tads. As Doctor Nelson has rightly mentioned about uh, biology, right? Yes, absolutely. Yes, you can. You must do. Uh, un the diagnosis is the key. Your diagnosis is the key. Yes, diagnosis, and uh, you must go understand the. Your, is your presentation ready? Yes, I okay. hope. Okay, let's let's start. Oh, pura hotel. Is it? Elimina la diapositiva. Ah. Eh. Ya no puedo. Okay. Eso es la fastidio. Oh, perfect. Okay, perfect. This is uh, David after a three year and uh, uh, six six months. Is all okay? No. Uh, this is after four years and uh, five months. It's very, very, very slow. No problem. I want to cut the presentation uh, in order to to our, uh, to. Uh, in fact, yesterday we had a, a webinar with uh, Dr. Roberto Seriolantini from Italy only. And it could not happen because uh, there was a server problem uh, at the Zoom's uh, European server. So it crashed and we couldn't uh, conduct the webinar. So we, we have postponed it for tomorrow. So probably some network issue must be there with uh, Zoom Europe server. I don't know. We don't know too. I think that is Keynote. If you can hear me very clearly, I think that uh, Keynote uh, is, uh, uh, is a very huge presentation. So we have just the last uh, three cases. And yeah, it's yeah, sure. uh, late because uh, usually I finish my presentation at this time. So it's... Uh, uh, meanwhile, uh, we have uh, other panelists also. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. I would like to know from uh, all of you, like, uh, are these the early days of self-destruction in orthodontics, as Dr. Kevin O'Brien has rightly mentioned in one of uh, his blog? Like, uh, now we are becoming more and more uh, applicants to even orthodontists, which is... Uh, uh, you know, most of the time uh, being uh, marketed by a company with a commercial interest. So uh, the real essence of uh, understanding the biology of tooth movement, biomechanics and diagnosis, as Dr. Nelson has rightly said, yeah. it's been overlooked by many of the younger generation orthodontists. We are not blaming anybody, but this is sadly true. Like they are also getting very confused as in what to do and what not to follow because they have so many things uh, at their disposal. Uh, they have something which is 3D, they have something which is, you know, tads, they have something which is, so they are being spoiled with the choices. So <laughs> what is your expert opinion on this? It would be great if you can just throw a light. Mm -hmm. Just a minute, your voice is, uh, I'll just unmute you. Okay, Dr. Nelson, you are 
Uh, I think you should unmute yourself. Yes. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Questions directly to me or? Oh, uh, all the panelists. There it is. I have my opinion. Maybe Enrique also can also give him. But... Hola, Enrique. Perdón, no, no, no te dijo hoy antes. Huh? Uh, Hola, Nelson. <laughs> Um, I have a lot of uh, ways to understand this question. Uh, honestly, I see the people is kind of uh, moving the investment of knowledge in the wrong direction. This is the most important thing. Now we live in a global world and uh, the information is very easy from many ways. The people can just Google everything Yes. Uh, so the thing is like the way you put your investment, you have, uh, of course, many beginners, they don't have enough money to invest in all fields, but they are really focusing the easiness. This is the big problem. Instead of go to the basic foundation, like exactly. go do courses in the diagnostics, understand occlusion, what kind of tool can I use for a good diagnosis? What kind of material? Should I buy a 3D scanner? Should I buy a good articulator? Should I buy, what should I buy? A good plier set. How can I start my career? Should I know deep CT? Should I know our MRI? Should I, what should I know? So people are kind of lost at this time because uh, the information is very confusing to be very honest to you. Yes. This is exactly my feeling. So my advice <clears throat> for the beginners is to go to a serious course with a good foundation. And from here you can fly away, but the good course is always based on biology and on serious diagnostics. Diagnostic, diagnostics is not so simple, honestly, but not so hard as well once you learn, you know? Sergio gave you a lot of uh, very good inputs here. Uh, showing cases, you guess, you see the questions we received is all based on mechanical, to mechanical. mechanical questions. This is another big problem with our schools. These schools are being driven over the past hundred years on biomechanics and biomechanics is very little thing in our uh, orthodontics. So you, I don't tell this is not important. This is also important to understand biomechanics, of course, but it's not the main thing. Uh, this is my opinion. Once you learn biology, once you learn the bone, you know, formation, resorption, adaptation of the condyles, adaptation of the TMJ, how many orthodontists understand deep TMJs? This is another problem. How the condyle can adapt to the all kind of malocclusions. <clears throat> so right. once you understand this, it's so easy to treat. Once you don't understand the basic foundation of our cranial mandibular system, you cannot treat anything. You just go dropping brackets or you know some plastic to align the teeth, and you go going circles and circles and circles. You never end the case. Thanks God, I already passed through that uh, phase of my career that I stay with my cases for two years, three years, four years, five years, six years, you never end. So how many cases we had in the past that I had to stay with the patient like a marriage? <laughs> cases that never end. So when you finish very unsatisfied, somehow good for the patient, but the patient get back to you in five years with a lot of TMD and you don't understand why. So Dr. this Dr. is why I know, I noticed during those years uh, with my like 30 something years in orthodontics, Enrique also can talk something about this as well. So it's like, a, we have, we have to understand that the knowledge of biology is the basics. Right. Never go and jump this stage and go to the mechanics. Mechanics is the second stage. Sometimes I don't need even a bracket to treat a case. 
this is my my observation on top of your question because no but it is uh, amazing like your insight and your input for this is amazing and and a lot of residents are listening to this a lot of youngsters great because sometimes i can put just a little composite and i treat the case yes. i don't even need a bracket yes but True. some cases i need everything i need to expand i need to intrude i need to extrude i need the tads i need this and that but some certain cases i don't but who is who exactly dr enrique Yes, I, I agree uh, totally with Professor Nelson. Uh, if we understand biology, we can do anything. But if we start with mechanics without the understanding of the biology, we we are losing all, all the you know all the the good things. So I think that nowadays people are you know, trying to fix all the things only with a straight wire and with a bracket. And this is a message to the residents because I, I have found in many countries that people don't want to know too much about biology and don't, don't want to know a lot uh, too much about biomechanics. They, they, they don't want to do wire bending. If, if you don't do any wire bending, sometimes you cannot correct a malocclusion. Very true. So I, I, you know, I don't believe in a magical bracket and a magical wire. I believe in understanding the malocclusion, understanding the biology, and then you can create a system to correct all the problems. But uh, sometimes you cannot correct the problems yeah, with a straight wire. So I, I think the I was very lucky because from my beginning, I learned by a progressive. So with this knowledge that you can segment, segment the arch and you can correct by segmenting the malocclusion, this is a great knowledge. And yes. people nowadays don't know how to segment the arch. They, they put one wire and they pretend to correct everything with everything. one wire. Mm -hmm. And so the, I think this is a very big mistake and a very big problem uh, mm -hmm. in the actual orthodontics. So true, very true. Thank you. Thank you so much for your You're input welcome. as well. Uh, Dr. Sergio, uh, is it uh, yes. welcome? I'm here. Now, First Davide day. or Marta? We are done with Anna, Lisa, and Antonella, Demiano, and Marta. Yes. We are waiting for David. No, we also we just uh, see David. It, sorry, it's the first time. We, I have a oh, problem well, with him. Fine. It I, happens. A technical issue. I think, I think I think that the presentation is too big and the keynote I, is. I read up. I, I eliminate all the slides that I already present, but uh, the, I have still this uh, problem here. I I, I have. Uh, Look, now I have like uh, 50 slides, very, okay. very few. But, do, do, uh, you have, do you have this presentation with your iPad or your mobile? Uh, no, 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 you, no, no. Sergio, Sergio okay. there, is, there is a thing that you maybe can do. Okay, now, now I see an, a new case, Alexandro. Yes, yes. Okay, let's go, let's start. Try if I can uh, finish because yeah, now yeah, there are, uh, the other cases, the oligo ones. So here there is Alessandro. Alessandro is already treated by other orthodontists and they trimmed, in order to close the bite, they trimmed the molars. And uh, look, this is the result. And this is the arches, the, the mandible is a very, very asymmetrical. You can also see here that is a very asymmetrical mandible. And look in the frontal, you can see 
the, the ramus in the right side, it's very, very, very short. But the face is good. The face is not bad face or bad skeletal pattern. It's a doligofacial tendency. He, she, he can bite just on the second molars. And so is uh, mesiofacial class two division one, uh, sever asymmetry, and uh, the cusps of the molars uh, were trimmed by previous uh, orthodontists in order to uh, to close the bite. This is the uh, video, and uh, the, this is uh, the, my objectives at that time. And uh, look, I want to. Uh, expand the arches and uh, close the bite by extrusion of the frontal teeth and the uprighting of the uh, posterior teeth. So for this reason, uh, I put Alessandro here, my core. And so first of all, I expand and, uh, and with the just aquadilics and a straight wire on the lower arch, I correct the class two on the, on the right side and uh, I correct the bite on the right side uh, uh, also. And here, there is the moment when I met Enrique. And uh, do you remember? And uh, yes. we saw each other in Taormina and uh, I start uh, to uh, use the Sato approach in my uh, in my mechanics. And this is the only uh, case where, where, where uh, I use the 16 by 22. Because uh, I tried to use the uh, T loops with the 16 square, but it's too much flexible. And uh, so I, I, I switched to the 16 by 22 with the SATO approach. And so I extrude a lot on the right side in order to give support to the mandible and look the marvelous uh, 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 at uh, 17 years old, the marvelous result that we had uh, in, the, in the frontal editing was amazing. And also the control of the denture on the upper denture and the uh, lower denture, the control of the bite and here again, again after just two years, incredible. And now we, it's uh, uh, easy to manage uh, with this approach, uh, the occlusal plane and the vertical dimension. But the principle, uh, I, I, I understand the, uh, the Sato uh, um, uh, approach, uh, to me, this is, I can share this opinion with Enrique and Nelson because uh, the principle, um, the, the, the main principles are uh, the same with rickets and are based again, again, again uh, with biology. Biology is just one, it's no name by nobody. And so I'm, uh, I'm uh, finishing, I want to close. Uh, uh, bite uh, and I finish in this way the cases I'm, I was very follow up uh, I don't like to present cases with uh, without follow up but this is my first case with the saddle mechanics with a combination because uh, I don't like to correct the class two uh, uh, with the, um, uh, the multi -t -t loops I want to stay with the, uh, with the, an open bite and uh, but in a uh, uh, class one relationship and then I squeeze uh, or I intrude and then I manage the occlusal plane and then I can have advantage from this also and look again 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 how the improvement of the uh, vertical eight of the Look that now we can see just one mandible, and look uh, the the response. If you can see the mandible uh, went uh, forward, and we closed the fascial axis. This case was incredible. 
this is uh, one year and just one year and six months uh, later, before and after, look, before and after, before and after, and look the, the response that uh, we have in the, uh, in the ramus, in the mandibular ramus was, uh, was, uh, was great, was great. And the other case, now is working my computer. So now I'm... Uh, <laughs> we are lucky. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, this is a strange mechanics that I perform. Cara, she has, she's a beautiful girl and she has a very, a great overjet, as you can see. But um, she has uh, three lower incisors. She's a symmetrical, she's a dolicofacial, extreme dolicofacial. She, she's a 79 and she has a plus six of, uh, um, uh, of uh, the distance from lower incisors to apogonion. She has a little bit of a double protrusion, but uh, we, we, we like this, so... She is a class two division one open bite dolicofacial with uh, all, uh, overjet increased, the lower arch protrusion, and I convest. So we want to close the space. And uh, I remember that in those cases, Rickets suggests me this kind of mechanics that I want to share um, with you. And uh, uh, for this reason, I put. Uh, uh, Chiara here, my curve, and uh, uh, if you extract or if you manage uh, the, uh, the, the agenesia or the extraction, I call the iatrogenic the extraction of a lower incisors, the a lower arch will, will contract. Instead, you must expand the lower arch even when you have, uh, you miss a lower incisor. So you, you, and you manage in this way, you uh, expand and maintain in the normal arch form and then macialize all the teeth of one hemi arch. And so you transform the lower canine to a lower incisors and the fleet in a class one relationship, the lower premolar with the upper canine and give the canine guidance to both lower canine and the premolar. Hmm? And uh, you center the midline between the central incisors and the control lateral incisors. And this is what the, we did. We uh, over treat in the, this side, but here we are uh, in a class three relationship. Uh, we have uh, a class one with the premolar. Hmm? And uh, almost uh, uh, after uh, one year and 11 months, we finished the case. And look how beautiful the occlusion uh, is with this treatment, because we, uh, we, 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 you, you can maintain uh, the, the bite oven. Because uh, if you uh, don't, do not expand the lower arch, uh, the, the upper arch will collapse. So this is the way how we uh, uh, we love to close uh, this uh, case. This is the control to perfect the um, frontal epithelium, the symmetry, and uh, we have a little of a protrusion of the lower incisors. Uh, you can see here in the superimposition analysis, uh, but we control the vertical dimension and the position of the uh, the mandible. This is our, the result after uh, uh, one year and four months. And sorry, I haven't no great follow up in this case, but it's just to show that uh, this kind of mechanics that I love when you miss and lower uh, uh, incisors. This is before and after, before and after. And uh, you can see the mechanics in uh, this side. You can see the class three side. This is the class one side. Mm -hmm. Okay, last case is uh, Maria. 
Maria, she's uh, class two, full class two, left side, great overjet. She had the pain and click on the right joint. And uh, you can see her at this big cyst here the, because she has uh, impacted canine, uh, impacted the and she was uh, treated, as you can see. And uh, the previous orthodontist uh, worried about the alignment of the lower incisors. So he put this splint. And he was safe. He was happy with this splint. He didn't see this over. He didn't see the joint. He didn't see anything. He just uh, see the incisors and the alignment of the right joint with the left joint. You can see this uh, asymmetry. And uh, obviously the patient was very asymmetrical. Look, all the face was very, very asymmetrical. This is a very, very bad case. And, but the position again, 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 of lower incisors was perfect. Mm -hmm. So you see we have a plus two and we have uh, eye convexity, and she's dolicofacial. Mm? She has uh, 83 of uh, uh, facial axis. And uh, so she said, oh, Dr. Sambadara, I don't want any surgery. I planned, I planned uh, uh, genioplasty because she has a very, very big facial eight. She has uh, uh, 53 of lower facial eight. So uh, I said, look, you, you are not in divine proportion. Here should be your point A. Your point A is uh, too high or your PM is too low. So uh, I said, we, I suggest to uh, a, a genioplasty. She said, oh, we'll see. OK, but uh, so she has a follicular cyst impacted the wisdom teeth upper and this the displacement in the joint and the maxillomandibular asymmetry. Class two on the right, the full class two on the left. She, be, she is a very difficult case, action of four primors. And uh, I, I said, uh, no, this, uh, I don't want to do this. And I want a compromise. So I didn't extract the premolar on the on the left side hmm, in order to center the midline. And I perform this kind of genioplasty. And for this reason, I put uh, in the extreme of the, of the curve, Maria, that was a very difficult case. Look the strain here. She cannot close the, 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 the mouth. A lot of strain, a lot of mandibular deviation, asymmetry on also on the maxilla. And the, the class two on the on the on this side, and so I extract on, on the upper arch and on this side. I put the bracket just in the teeth that I want to move, and there is another reason for the, because this approach is also aesthetic, a biologic and aesthetic also. And here I. I, I, I use the push and pull arch. So I'm pushing in this side and I, I, I pull in, in the other side and I center the, the midline. Then I manage the upper incisors and this is our, the, the result. And this, she said, okay, okay, Sergio, now I, uh, you, you, you must to remove the appliance. I said, no, I want to finish better this case. I love this case. I want to finish this case better. She said, no, 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 no. Stop because uh, now I'm engaged in, uh, now she's beautiful and she found uh, uh, a guy. So she, I want to remove the appliances. So I said, oh, let me check. Let me check. This is uh, the, the result. This is the, uh, and uh, you can see that uh, we haven't no strain, no strain, no more strain. We close the bite, incredible. And so I, I superimpose my VTO with the genioplasty and I use the divine proportion and said, oh yeah, look, look here. So uh, we don't want to perform the genioplasty anymore. 
now you have uh, you had a good response of the mandible. If you superimpose my uh, uh, VTO in the result, it was the same without genioplasty. So it was incredible. Look how now it's symmetrical, incredible. So this was just amazing. It lasts four years, but was a very, very difficult case. And this is after two years and one month. This is before and after. And you can see without any tracing, the, 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 the environment changed, the function changed, everything changed here. And so this is the result. The result is uh, uh, the, the consequence of the, 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 the function change in the mouth, something really changed in this mouth. And the ear, you can see with the CEF and uh, with the superimposition analysis, look in the frontal head film, the improvement that uh, we have with this approach. And I superimpose the two frontal and I have some, some arrangement in the skeletal bone of the, the mandible before and after look before and after incredible this is uh, before after the extraction extraction the push and pull arch and when we finish and look how the mandible went forward mm -hmm without any extrusion in a dolicofacial patient of the lower uh, molar, a little bit of extrusion of the upper molar. And uh, we also closed the bite and managed the torque. We didn't affect the position of the lower incisors. This is one year and four months later, when uh, we check again, This is uh, seven years and nine months later, back uh, just uh, two years ago, and uh, we were uh, very, very proud. So, uh, okay, now we are finishing all oh, this. Another case, another case that knocked the door just right now. Like, do you know the secretary that introduced the, the case here? And so I love this case because I call this case a demon case, no? In order to advertise demon, they, they, they like to, to show this case with the canine here and the magic choir that uh, will uh, adjust uh, everything. And uh, we have a severe crowding. We have uh, 7.6 in the lower arch and uh, seven millimeters in the, uh, in the upper, upper arch. And uh, Monica also, she's a dolicofacial, eight of, uh, of uh, uh, facial axis, so she's a severe dolicofacial, high convexity, and, but she has a good position of the lower incisors. So uh, we treated her without extraction. And so we expand a lot the arch. And uh, for this reason, we put Monica here and we use the quadilix uh, to manage this case. And this is uh, after uh, a couple of, after 10 months, you can see the beautiful class one, both sides, molar, I mean. Then we close the space and then we start to manage uh, the lower arch. We connect uh, with the double delta, the upper arch. And this is when we finish the case. And uh, again, 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 we didn't like uh, too much the position of the upper canine, but uh, we have a partner in our office that is the nature, that is the growth, that uh, we are sure that the crow will help us to, with the function to improve this uh, occlusion. Look, the expansion that we performed in uh, this case, and uh, this is uh, the control when we decide to remove the wisdom teeth and uh, look the beautiful profile and uh, the beautiful uh, 
um, space in the uh, denture that uh, we have. And this is, uh, we miss a little bit of the position. This is uh, the result that we have uh, superimposed on the treatment that we planned after uh, five years and two months, look the improvement of the position of the canine due to the function. This is uh, before and after, and this is 10 years wow. and eight months of uh, uh, post-treatment. Uh, uh, and the, 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 the occlusion is beautiful, very, very beautiful occlusion, beautiful smile in function. And look, the adaptation that the rickets call the meta positioning. That means that the denture uh, start to uh, uh, function uh, uh, the, the upper and, and lower together. Okay, uh, you can now be on time for the sequence, the logical approach, but in the way derives the mechanics, okay, with the Stenji matrix. Again, again, like Nelson stated before, diagnosis and Gugino, diagnosis is the 75% of the management of a case, and the 20% is the unlocking, and just 5% is mechanics, but people, people, People look for mechanics, but they miss, they miss the main part, that is the biology. And the word bioprogressive means this, bio. Bio means biological. Progressive is mean that, that we, we progressively- I, 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 didn't, I didn't see your presentation before, huh? Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> So the conclusion is we, we didn't all... make this agreement before. <laughs> <laughs> In order to achieve the simplicity, you must prevent the worsening of the condition and individualize the treatment. And so the take-home message is a sophisticated diagnosis allows an effective and efficient aesthetic and biological approach. The mechanisms that make things simple are sometimes very complex. The simplistic approach is candidate to failure to solve difficult problems. And the 360 degrees rehabilitation of dental patient is the role of true specialist. And I want to finish with this definition of orthodontics by Ricketts. Orthodontics may seem small. And uh, in the total scheme of the thing, it may appear significant, but we perform a unique function of, to mankind. We contribute to his comfort, to his happiness, to his sense of well being. We touch the very heart of modern culture. Man is a gregor animal. He clusters together for security and he groups for stimulation with his fellows. He fa his face, his mouth, and his teeth help him to relate and to communicate with the other. And more uh, important to establish his identity. This in turn leads to uh, to uh, happiness, love, and a sense of accomplishment and purpose. This is the definition of orthodontic spirits. And I want to say thank you to the, my professor, uh, director of the school where I teach, uh, Professor, uh, professor Chichu from uh, uh, Messina. And um, Not. And this is all my stuff. Sorry, I want to say thank you uh, to all, 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 all my staff uh, that they, especially to uh, 
uh, to Salvo that is here with me, say hello Salvo, and is uh, great support uh, for me. And uh, I present all these cases, but uh, really we work in a, a equip and uh, we work all together in order to achieve this uh, uh, result. And uh, I think goes to my, uh, my master, that is uh, uh, Ricketts, that I have the honor and the opportunity uh, to spend uh, a lot, a lot of the period of my, uh, my training. The, the same photo is here, here in my office. <laughs> Wow. And, uh, this is hello <laughs> from my family. This is uh, from my family, my wife, my son and daughter. They say hello to you. And I want to dedicate this presentation to all frontline health workers engaged in this battle and to defenseless victims of uh, this pandemic. I like to think I've uh, lightened your day by talking about our common portion. And uh, I believe that now it's time to return to our patient. So, Libertà means freedom. Uh, this is my little daughter. And uh, if you want to join me, here there are my uh, emails, my website, and my web. Uh, uh, Facebook page. So thank you, IJ. Thank you for your kind invitation. Thank you, Eric, and thank you, Nelson, for your, all your uh, your suggestions and comments. I appreciate a lot. And excuse me for my connection and for uh, the presentation, the keynote, uh, the uh, technical problem. That's thank not you. in our hand. That happens. Uh, it, technology is not in our hand. So. <laughs> On the contrary, it was really our pleasure to see such cases where, uh, you know, rather than being mad and running behind the uh, commercially gimmick uh, things, as you said, a magic wire and magic bracket, it is always better to do something where you utilize your brain for diagnosis, you know the biology, and then you apply the mechanics. And you don't need any fancy stuff, you don't need any expensive stuff. You can do as Dr. Nelson has rightly suggested that when you are starting and you have a limited resources, if you have a brain, you can apply that brain. All you have to do is twist, pull or push in orthodontics. And you only have one remedy that is force. And how you apply is up to you rather than letting you know, been applied by a plastic or by a wire or whatever it is. So uh, basics should be clear. And, and we are glad that we have such an eminent people who has like, look at the cases you have treated non-extraction with the distillation, without extraction, uh, right? With uh, 10 years of follow-up, without using tats, like amazing. Uh, I don't Thank have you. a word. Thank you. you. And, and I'm sure that this would ignite a lot of uh, passion in uh, youngsters about bi bioprogressive therapy. As uh, you know, uh, I was just listening to Dr. Billy Prophet's uh, video a few days back, uh, uh, which he gave on AO, and where he was just talking that, uh, you know, why people are choosing for an alternative uh, uh, philosophy when there is a standard best philosophies are available is because uh, he quoted uh, Mark Twain's quote here and he said, he said that that lie is already in the street while truth is still getting up and putting on his trouser and getting to getting ready to go out. So truth is always a little slow and lie is always ahead and people will always follow the lie. So this is the time for us to wake up and follow the truth and wait for the truth rather than following the lie. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, we have two questions. If uh, time permits, uh, we can just take, uh, because few of the questions I had answered, it was almost similar. Uh, Dr. Uh, Desari Aguado Muari. 
sorry for my pronunciation uh in lucas case you used a quad helix for a year you usually used it for uh, a long period in growing patient uh, i use quad helix uh, to expand i usually only with the uh, orthopedic activation in the growing patient and uh, i me, Nelson, and Enrique can show you that uh, Quadelix has an orthopedic influence in the maxilla and also in the mandible in the control of the vertical dimension. They published a very nice article in the American Journal. Then they compare the, the, uh, the effect of the Quadelix in the vertical dimension with the us and uh, the extrusion that we have on the upper molar uh, with the quadrilix control the position of the mandible. And this is what happens in the last patient that I present. Uh, even in the oligofacial patient, the extrusion again, again, again of the upper molar is the key factor, especially in the, the oligofacial patient. In the growing patient, uh, I use, uh, I correct the cross bite or the expansion in six months. Uh, but um, uh, I, I, if I late mix dentition, I maintain the quadrilis. I love to maintain the quadrilis for one year, one year and a half, in order to correct the position to guide the eruption of the permanent teeth. Obviously, in that case, I remove after the expansion because I have all the teeth there. But that was a orthodontic uh, expansion, not, not skeletal. So I just expand a little bit with gentle, with gentle force, not, not too much force. And uh, this is the way I, uh, I use the politics. Okay, last question is from Dr. Sakti Kumar. How much time do you take for activation of your utility arches? I activate the utility arch just when I need, because just when I put the first time, maybe I have the intrusion that I need uh, or the anchorage that I need. Sometimes if I want to uh, have more intrusion, after two months, three months, I activate it for intrusion. Uh, another topic, if in the retractor utility arch or uh, uh, expansion utility arch uh, or in the, uh, in the push and pull that you activated each month in order to move the incisors or forward or backward or to center the midline. So it depends, it depends on, the, uh, on the objective that you have. Uh, uh, is there any contemporary uh, way of uh, doing a bioprogressive therapy? Yes, contemporary, I didn't catch. As in, uh, is there any refinement to make it more user-friendly and uh, to use in a contemporary orthodontics? Is there any alternative way or it is still a standardized bioprogressive approach which was been suggested by uh, Ricketts, it has been followed or are there any changes been or modification been given into this approach? You are talking with the three exponents worldwide <laughs> that are, I think that are responsible uh, to make it simple. To okay. me, to me, it's simple this approach because if I show you the, the, the first cases are very simple. You open the bite and I said, you can put a straight wire, you can put the liners, you can put everything you want, but unlock the malocclusion, understand the utility arch, the, the, uh, how you can manage and transform a difficult case in an easy case and then you can do everything. So this mechanic, I, I show you the two by one, just one incisor. Yes. And just the two ends, to me, it's very, very simple. So me, Eric and Nelson, uh, I, I, I think that your guys are, are agree with me that we, 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 we 
we we try no we try to uh, to to make this simple to us it's very simple yes thank you it's, it's sophisticated but it's not complicated sophisticated is something else it's not if you understand the metrics you have to understand the staging the stages you okay thank you thank you so much thank you dr uh, uh, nelson thank you dr no enrique and uh, welcome we have your friend, uh, Dr. Sarat Kara, also here. Uh, yeah, send my hello to him. This is my yeah, good he's, friend. He's there, he's there uh, as a panelist also. He can just put some word. Dr. Sarat. I guess he left. He sent me a message. Oh, OK, OK, OK. Thank you for sparing your time and uh, you know giving such a invaluable tips uh, into basics of biomechanics and as well as biology of uh, bioprogressive therapy, uh, we would definitely owe this help because this would ignite a lot of passion in a lot of youngsters, at least in India and abroad. And uh, it is amazing to have everybody from every continent of the world. And uh, the, the you know, every adversity, we always learn new thing. And in this adversity also, uh, it has united the world like never before as uh, we are all sitting from a different continent on this yes. platform and uh, learning and sharing has become a new uh, normal. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. My all pleasure. No problem. Yeah. Thank Bye. you so much.